What, what people miss, now I still understand why it's so hard. Bitcoin is the best savings technology that's ever been invented. Everyone should be doing it. <laughs> Just, everyone should be doing it. There's no left, there's no right, there's no Republicans, sure. there's Democrats. There is <laughs> yeah. in and there is out. Money is an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. I have recently invested in... You might know him by 2.1 quadrillion. Uh, always always like that name there. You might know him from... Uh, he's talking about a lot of interesting projects happening with... Or not, sorry. Corporations adding Bitcoin to their balance sheets. Founder, CEO, CIO of Morgan Creek Capital. Mark Yusko, how are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. How are y'all doing? Doing fantastic. This is an honor. This is straight up an honor to have Mark Yusko no, on the show. Like, thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Nick, Nick uh, Nick's big, big fan. Always, uh, you know, bringing you up. Uh, all right. So, you know, right now you're talking about Node Monkeys a whole lot. We can get into that in a second. I'm super excited to talk about the dominoes that never fell. This is something I talk about on this channel a lot, Mark. And it's the the promises that we, we thought were going to play out in Q4 2020. If you recall, yeah. lots of uh, chatter of, oh, inflation's going to be pretty bad. These corporations have tons of cash just sitting in a bank account doing nothing. Yep. Hey, well, not doing nothing, losing value quarter losing after quarter. Down. And they have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. And the next thing you know, Michael Saylor, he's doing a big symposium with all these S&P 500 CEOs. Elon Musk is on board Months later, El Salvador, I'm like, this is happening. Apple's going to be adding Bitcoin to the balance sheet. Amazon's going to be adding it. Yeah. All these companies are going to be adding. I can't wait for these dominoes to fall. You know how big the Tesla domino is? No other domino fell. Well, it's now true. we're starting to see little dominoes fall. Am I imagining it? Am I too bullish? Or we might see some serious corporations add Bitcoin to its balance sheet in 2024. What do you think? Not well, I... Clearly, I love the leading question. So uh, I have been tweeting about this this week. So I have recently invested in one such corporation, uh, a Japanese corporation called MetaPlanet, and uh, myself and Jason Fang and, and a number of others. So uh, Simon Garovich has, has run this company for a number of years, and he realized that you know, the, the issue is worse in Japan than it is in the U.S. Because mm -hmm. the Japanese yen has been on a one-way downward path <laughs> since 2011. It went from 85 yen per dollar to 152.7 this morning. I mean, it's just brutal. And he finally said, you know what? We're, we're going to take a, a page out of the, the sailor playbook and or MicroStrategy playbook. And, you know, when, when a play works... You should run it. And to your point, lots of corporations in the United States who are sitting on these mountains of cash, you know, Buffett, for example, but Buffett's never going to do it, right? Because he calls it, it rat poison squared. I'm like, what does that even mean? And how do you even know what rat poison tastes like unless you're a rat? No, I'm just kidding around. Mm. Um, so yes, other companies are, are going to do it. It'll be smaller, I think, at first. And there's probably some that have done it but they don't really want to talk about it because if it doesn't work and, and you can't have a short time horizon for this, you have to have a long time horizon and you have to have the ability uh, in the company to uh, access capital markets to grow. And, and I think uh, that means you have to have good reach and good relationships. So uh, and good management. So I think, you know, not every company should should probably jump right in if you don't have people who are well versed in in the segment. Yeah. Actually, that's not yeah. true. Everyone should be doing it. <laughs> just everyone should be doing it. I was going to say, Mark, I I just had a quick question. I you know, Japan kind of has like a special place in the Bitcoin lore. Um, there is a, a ton of you know blockchain development there. Um, I, I my understanding is, and I'm I'm more of like I'm I'm always going to be a perpetual student of money. Yeah. Um, I kind of really finally understood it in my late 30s. Um, and so I understand that, you know, the Japanese economy and its, um, you know, demographics are also in a slide. And J Japan also, correct me if I'm wrong, they're the biggest or second biggest holder of U.S. treasuries. 
it yep. seems to me that the, the the whole U.S. Treasury kind of like time bomb has definitely been a poison pill to the Japanese economy. Is that is that true, or am I am I not correlating that correctly? No, hundred percent true. Look, look, Japan. If you go back to the late seventies, early eighties, and you went to Harvard Business School, they were teaching classes on how to emulate. Japanese corporations. Absolutely. You know, telling you to do the calisthenics in the morning and everybody wear the same uniform and, and uh, say, oh, gozaimasu in the morning. I mean, it was, Japan was it. I mean, it was Japan Inc. And, mm -hmm. you know, the stock market just a couple months ago made the old high from 1979. Mm -hmm. We're in 2024, y'all. I mean, that, that was a long time. That's crazy. Between, between peaks. And, so it, it's this interesting dynamic in that demographically, Japan is 11 years ahead of the United States. So everything that happens in Japan happens in America 11 years later. So Japan had their, no, I'm sorry, it was 1989, not, not 1979, 1989. Um, so 1989, Japanese stock market peaks, 2000, 11 years later, US stock market peaks. Now we've then we made new highs late earlier, but it's because we devalued our currency faster, which we'll come back to. And what's interesting about assets is they don't price in their thing, right? We don't price stocks in stocks, right? We price stocks in currency. We don't price my house in my house. We price my house in currency. Yeah. So, for value. you know, I, I sit here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and according to Zillow, my house went up 50% over the last couple of years. My house did not grow. It did not get more efficient. <laughs> the money got worse. So the money getting worse, and that's why Bitcoin prices go up or other asset prices go up, is one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. But we don't price Bitcoin in Bitcoin. We price Bitcoin in yen or euros or dollars. And, you know, going down. Been making new highs in Turkish lira and Venezuelan bolivars for for you know uh, a couple of years. Really didn't have bear markets in those markets. So back to Japan. So Japan has this demographic cliff. They have you know more people, sixty five to eighty five, than any place on on the planet in terms of percentages. And turns out, sixty five to eighty five year old people are not productive. They're perfectly nice people, but they're not productive. Yeah. And they don't spend very much. So you have a deflationary death spiral that occurs when you get to demographic cliff. And again, we're 11 years behind them demographically. And so our debt got downgraded in, their debt got downgraded in 1996. Ours got downgraded in 2007, 11 years later. In 2007, uh, they said, they would, I thought in 2008, they said no more QE. Right? They said no more QE. We're not going to buy any more bonds. And that was when they were 100% of uh, GDP, debt to GDP. Today, they're 220 and they own 60% of the government bonds at the Bank yes. of Japan. So they kept doing QE. So we said a couple of years ago, no more QE, right? We're going to stop doing QE. No, we're not. We're going to keep doing yep. QE. And then we're going to go off this demographic cliff. And there is a race to the bottom, right? When you get overly indebted, you have four choices. And this has been true for millennia. I actually did a presentation on this the other day down in Cayman about power, politics, and populism. And you go back to the history of empires. They all rise through power, military mm -hmm. might and, and power. They stagnate because of politics, you know, capitalism turns into cronyism and people at the top, you know, I use the all seeing eye, the people at the top start stealing from the people at the bottom through this thing called yep. inflation, which is just devaluation of the currency. And then populism rises up and you get kicked out and that ends the empire. Roman empire fell and then we had the British empire and the American empire and eventually we'll have the Chinese empire and then we'll have the, the nation stateless empire. But this, this falling of empires is inevitable because when you have a lot of debt, you have four choices. You can pay it back, right? With the debt in the United States, if you tax the wealth of everyone in this country, you couldn't pay back the debt. Forget income tax. 
Yeah. You taxed the wealth. If you stole everybody's wealth, you couldn't pay back the debt. So you can't pay it back. Second thing you do is you can restructure it. But to restructure it, someone's got to take their side. So are the Japanese going to take 60 cents on the dollar? Hell to the no. Uh, Chinese going to take 60 cents on the dollar? Hell to the no. So they're not, you're not going to restructure it. You can default on it. Uh-uh, because if you default on it, you get kicked out of power. And the only thing politicians care about, right? There's no left, there's no right, there's no Republicans, sure. there's Democrats. There is <laughs> yeah. in and there is out. And when you're in, you do or say whatever it takes to stay in. And when you're out, you do or say whatever it takes to get in. Donald Trump was a lifelong Democrat. And he ran as a Republican or whatever he calls himself. And he got in, right? That's how it works. You get in, you stay in. So yeah. your only choice is to devalue. And that is exactly what Japan has been doing since 2011. Um, Abe-san came in and said, we have one goal. We will devalue the currency and that will make asset prices rise and people will feel wealthier and they'll, they'll engage more. And so prices go up, but they're not going up in real terms. They're going up in nominal terms. Here's a crazy stat. Stocks. Everyone says they're at new all-time highs, right? No, they're not. No. Yeah, not, because not price real value. Pay. Yeah. In gold, they're the same price as 1996. Wow. Really? Yeah. 1996. Same price when you price in gold. Huh. Because gold for 5,000 years has been the only money. Money is an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. Everything that we think of as money is currency. Currency is backed by debt. It sits on top of gold. Gold sits in the central bank vaults. And then we build money on top of it through debt, currency, I'm sorry, currency. And so gold for 5,000 years, a single ounce, right, has bought a fine person suit from Cleopatra's time to a suit of armor, to a zoot suit in the 20s, to Savile Row today, you exchange one coin and you get a fine person suit. The problem with gold is it's not very divisible and it's not very portable. Like if I had a bar, which I don't have one handy, but if You're I did- You're not Bob Menendez? Break... <laughs> you don't have gold bars in your closet like Bob Menendez? Well, I, I gold do, bar but I'm not going to show you where on, uh, online. Uh, I don't want to show you books behind you. Every one of those books <laughs> yeah, has yeah, a, yeah, a bar-shaped exactly. hole cut bars. out of the pages. And But okay, so I, I grab a gold bar and I'm going to break it into three pieces. Now, look, I'm not strong enough to do that. So even if I could do it, yep. I couldn't stuff it in the computer and send you each a third of the bar. But I can send you Bitcoin instantaneously because Bitcoin is more divisible and more portal. And, and the reason I am hashtag 2.1 quadrillion is there are 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis mm -hmm. in the world, or there will be when we're, we're at the end in 2140. And that's each Bitcoin divisible to 100 million units. And I long for the day when we no longer talk about the price of Bitcoin, right? I mean, I have the buy Bitcoin sign back there. Yeah, our chat loves problem. that That's thing. Uh, the is that sign. the one? Is that the one that was behind Janet Yellen? No, no, no here's it. That is that is an original. I got it from Christian. It is signed. It is numbered. Oh, wow. But I tried to buy the original, <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, okay, but I really think it should be in a museum." Like, oh, wow. it, it will be, that It'll makes be in sense. my museum, the Yusko Museum. Oh. Oh, and okay. he, he declined. And so, he, but he did make me that and, and gave it to me, or it didn't give it to me. I bought it from him. And, um, but now it comes out this morning uh, that he is going to auction the, the original. So I, I will be at the auction, but my guess is I will lose to someone with with more money than, than you, I have. You know, that kind of brings me to my next question here, and that's people spending their Bitcoin and OG whales, you know, early miners, people that have been in Bitcoin for more than 10 years, are they more willing to spend their Bitcoin versus other assets? Because, you know, you, you tweet about uh, node monkeys a lot and Bitcoin DeFi is starting to flourish and we got a Bitcoin meme, meme coin season probably one small correction, coming months. One small correction. I tweet about on-chain monkeys a lot. Yes. I also tweet about node monkeys and, and runes and everything Sorry, else. Yeah. But, but there's on so chain many monkeys. Monkey, on chain monkeys. Mutant is monkey. my, I, 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 I mix up my simians. I, I apologize okay. there. No, it's okay. But, uh, it's okay. you know, I do like you the think, node monks too. You know, we have bit, people that are in Bitcoin for a long time, and almost the longer they're in it, the less likely they want to spend it. And it's, you know, I'll never buy that S coin. I'll never buy that new DeFi protocol. I'll never 
by that protocol that has a stable coin on it. I just, I'm a Bitcoin maxi. I'm a Bitcoin, you know, I'm a, I'm a cypherpunk. Will these same people that would never buy Ethereum, would never buy Solana, would never buy Cardano, will these people, do you think they'll be inclined to buy a meme coin? You know, say, will, the, will, will there be Bitcoiners that exist that yeah. will never touch Dogecoin, but will just be degening into these meme coins like there's no tomorrow? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, that's a great question. You know, I, I, I have fun with the maxis because I'll go into a, a Bitcoin maxi space and they're like, yeah, I hear you shit coiner. I'm like, what are you talking about? I have more Bitcoin than you. And that's not a brag. <laughs> it's just, it's just real. And, and that's just luck, right? I'm not, I'm, again, it's not a brag. It's just, it's just, don't call me just because I am a technology maximalist. And so, yes, I own Ethereum. I was an early investor in Solana, not because I'm smart, but because Kyle was smart and we invested with Kyle. And look, I made a lot of money in Solana. Now, Solana, I got in real trouble because, you know, about a year ago, I was on a show and, and I was, they said, well, what'd you do with your Solana bag? I said, well, I sold most of it. And I said, well, why? Well, because we made like 2,000 times our money, but... But <laughs> I sold because it was breaking, right? I said transactions yeah. were vaporizing and the community went batshit crazy. They were like, yeah, yeah we, we never roll back the chain. I said, I never said you roll back the chain. What I said was transactions go out, the network's congested, and they don't settle. And, and no, unless I'm watching not only it that. To resubmit it, well, now 75% last weekend. So... So anyway, so this, this guy reached out to me and he said, we fixed it. I'm like, all right, show me. So he walked me through and we set up a phantom wallet and he, he actually bought me markusco.sol and, and he sent me some, you know, he sent me $10 on, on you. And look, the phantom experience sending USDC, far superior than, yeah. than any of the other ones I've looked at. Fine, fine, way better. But it was cheap, it was fast. But here's the thing. If 75% of transactions don't settle because the network's congested, we got a problem. And so I, I like things that work and I like, I, and here, well, the bottom line is to answer your question, are maxis, Bitcoin maxis, going to ape into ordinals and runes? Now, a few myself included, because I actually consider myself a Bitcoin maxi, although the true maxis would say, oh, no, you're not. Like, I own some ordinals, I own some runes, and I'm pretty excited about, you know, the runes launch um, coming up. So I, I own pre-runes, I don't own runes yet, I own pre-runes. But I'm pretty excited about what what's going on there, because inscriptions enable higher transaction fees, which means the miners get compensated and the network's more secure. So I like that. But I don't, I don't think the true maxis, like the real hardcore, you know, you can pry the Bitcoin out of my cold, dead hands. Well, here's the problem with that. I ask these people all the time, how much money do you have in the bank? Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, how much money do you have in the bank? Well, that's not the same. I'm like, yeah, it is. Because it's not your money, right? You live in a world where you still need to spend in fiat, right? You can't buy coffee. I mean, you can buy coffee in a few places with Bitcoin. But bottom line is most of what we do is in, can't pay your taxes. You got, yeah, you we're gotta, not immortal vampires. We have to, you know, we have bills and, you know, food live. and shelter. And yeah. What, what people miss, now I still understand why it's so hard. Bitcoin is the best savings technology that's ever been invented. Full stop. It's money that doesn't devalue. It actually is deflationary instead of inflationary. And so it's the best saving. Now, now, when do you spend your savings? Not never. Not never. You spend it when you have a big expense, right? You want to buy a house. You want to send your kids to college. You want to take a vacation. So this, you know, this whale that bought it at I think it was like 70 cents or something. No, 50 cents. Maybe held it all the way to 70,000 and sold a thousand. It was like, oh my God, you know, it doesn't have diamond hands. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. At some point, you need to replenish. The, the way you have to think about it is three buckets, right? We all have a liquidity bucket. 10 to 15% of our 
wealth that we need to spend for our lifestyle. Then we have a get rich bucket, right? 10 to 15%. That's for all the crazy ideas, you know, the brother-in-law's condo deal, the the hot <laughs> stock tip you got from your friend. You're going to lose all that. So just keep it small, but that's fine. <laughs> and then you have your savings bucket and that's 70 to 80% of your wealth. And, and the boomer approach is 60, 40, 70, 30, diversified portfolio, stocks and bonds. Well, now this incredible asset, digital assets has come along and now you can diversify into those things. And you could even say, well, with Bitcoin, I could just, I could swap that whole portfolio into Bitcoin. Fine, you wanna do that? That's fine. That, that could be your savings. But here's the thing, that 10 to 15% in your liquidity bucket, there's a hole in the bottom, it's gonna drain. So you got to keep replenishing yeah, to look at it. And as the Bitcoin keeps to appreciating, can remember Bitcoin doesn't grow. It's the currency that's getting worse mm -hmm. or the demand is rising, right? Supply and demand. And I don't see why that's so hard. And I don't see why people look at it as a negative. If you take some of your savings and spend it. That's yeah. how life works. Yeah, like I said, you know, we're not vampires. People get mad. How dare you spend that Bitcoin? How It's like, you know, that person needed a vehicle. I Call me crazy, but, you know, maybe buying a vehicle so they can go back and forth to work to, hey, maybe buy more Bitcoin in the future could be a good thing. Well, it's great talking to you, Mark. Uh, Mark, folks, if you want to listen to Mark some more, they have a webinar coming up in about a week. It's April 25th. Long Short Equity is back featuring, uh, featuring himself and Corey Lester. It's Morgan Creek Capital Management. Check that out. Uh, really, really great talking to you. Yeah, one one last shill. So oh, yeah. every week yes. we also do uh, what we call the ABCD News Roundup, AI blockchain chips data. If you go to at digital currents, like you, can, you can find that, that uh, YouTube as well as uh, Spotify and Apple. And uh, thanks for having me on. And we'll talk again soon. Uh, always a great time. Everybody smash the like for his buy Bitcoin sign. Folks. He, he's, he might get the original. All right. This guy is a true <laughs> maxi. Even we'll if see. he bought some Solana. Thanks, we Mark. forgive you. We love you. You're still. the best. All Appreciate right. You. Thanks, y'all. All right. That was good. Stuff.